The sport of breath hold or free diving is relatively unknown in America, but in Europe and other parts of the world, the athletes who compete in this dangerous sport are as revered as a star quarterback or an ace pitcher. What they do is truly remarkable. You might even say breathtaking. In fact, the man you're about to meet has been clocked holding his breath for seven minutes. This extraordinary lung power is what allows him to descend to depths normally reserved for men in submarines. So, take a deep breath as we follow along on a world record dive with Francisco Ferreras, also known as Pupin. Pupin showed up at the Underwater Explorers Society uh, unannounced and uh, said, I want to try for the the world uh, record deep dive here, breath hold dive. And we asked the guy, you know, well, what's the record now? And he said, well, it's, I think it's uh, 403 feet or something like that. And, and we were all shocked. We had no idea that people were going to these depths. When I was 19, I set down my first uh, world record in free diving. From 1987 until now, I got 17 world records. We were a little skeptical, but we went out with the pin out to a, a, a site called Theo's Wreck. It's about a 220-foot freighter that, uh, that rests on the ocean bottom in, a, in 120 feet of water, right on the edge of a drop-off into 2,000 feet. And uh, he jumped in the water with a mask and snorkel and dove to 150 feet without blinking. We were pretty impressed. His breath hold capacity is remarkable. Uh, we see here of training, I have not doubled my lung capacity. It was pretty amazing. I was down at like 130 feet on, on tank and this guy came on cruising down and just hanging out at the bottom. This was depths that I never knew anybody could go without scuba. And he was just down there for two and three minutes, deeper than I was even going. When I came back with the video, I was like, you know, this guy's the real McCoy. He can do it. On the day of the dive, the weather was marginal. As the, as the day wore on, though, the wind dropped, the seas dropped and uh, it looked like we were going to have a window, so we all jumped on the boats and away we went. There were uh, three handheld cameras and um, two remote cameras in the water. One of the remotes was actually affixed to the sled and one camera was at the very bottom of the 410-foot line. Uh, the sled would go down this 410-foot uh, line and deliver the pin to the bottom. The judges were present on the support boat and watched the TV monitors connected to the remote control cameras. As long as they can see Pepin throughout the dive and uh, see that he reaches the bottom position with the, with the monitor at 410 feet, uh, they can see he's got the record. After Pepin uh, suits up, he drops into the water and makes a, a couple of practice dives. He goes to maybe uh, 100 feet or 120 feet. I think most people don't realize that, that what Pepin is doing is one of the most physiologically demanding things that you could ever consider. Just doing the dive to 410 feet, the, the actual pressure from the water. It's enough to completely collapse the lungs. The volume of air that's left in his body is barely enough to fill his uh, sinus passages and stop his eardrums from caving in. If he opened his mouth at, at depths beyond 300 feet or so, uh, the pressure would be just like a fire hose forcing water into his uh, respiratory system. The pin uh, sits on the dive platform and just uh, takes a few minutes to to concentrate and, and, and get himself together. I concentrate on send my heartbeat very slow, very, very, uh, very down, and that I try to forget about the people that I have around. 
It was still quite choppy, I would say three to four foot seas, rollers coming in and the back of the boat was just pummeling up and down, up and down, you're getting tossed about. And then I was trying my best just to keep the camera steady. And I was actually concerned for him because as he was hyperventilating, he was being dunked up and down in the water. He's bobbing up and down, his head's going underwater. And uh, in a minute or two, gives a signal to the, the person who's going to release the sled and down he goes. Just moving through the water that quickly on that sled was, you know, shaking the skin on, on his uh, face. And uh, when he zooms past you and then goes down, down, down into the blackness, way out of sight, it's pretty eerie. It's, uh, it's not a thing that I think I could do. And of course, the deeper he goes, the faster he goes because his body's being compressed. And uh, he's got his eyes tightly closed. He can't see anything. All he can feel is the pressure, the building pressure. The feeling that I get in close to the end it's a, it's a very strong feeling. But I know that nobody went been down here before, right? This is uh, the maximum. But I got to go back 400 feet to see the sun again. Uh, there's a long way up. He has to detach this lift bag, inflate it, and hang on for dear life, because uh, if he lets go of the lift bag on the way up, that's it, he's finished. All of a sudden you see the, the glow of this shroud of bubbles and then you know he's on his way up. As I looked down I could see this huge red balloon coming up with just like engulfed in bubbles as he was ascending back towards the surface. There was a bang and there was a huge cloud of bubbles. At 30 feet the bag blew up. That was lucky because if it had happened deeper, he could have never made it to the surface. I go up, I go like this, and, the, and then I would put my face back in the in the in the in the water again. And the people say this guy is uh, something happened, and they would come to see me. No, I'm okay. I just have to put all the things together again and say, okay, I'm back surface. I'm uh, nothing to happen. Everyone was just uh, jubilant. I mean, we really loved it. We were, we were glad to see it. Well done, my man. Francisco, Francisco, why you want to do that? And I started thinking about my dive, and I say, can't believe it. I, I went down to 100, 125 meters, 410 feet. And I'm here. It's like a dream. If I keep training, my lung capacity is going to increase a lot more. And um, right now, uh, I'm talking about going down to 500 feet. We'll be right back.